Hey everyone, this is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike and I do bees. Just want to do a video real quick of a bunch of tedious tasks that we do, well that I do, uh, in the off season. Of course there's a few you have to do during the season, but I try to get all these little tedious tasks done so that I'm prepared for the year. Uh, I started off my video series of the 2020 season um, doing some of those tedious tasks, scraping frames and things like that. So what I want to do is put together videos of different things I do um, in the next uh, month or so leading up to, well not even a month, the next couple weeks leading up to um, getting ready to get going, swarm traps and all that stuff that starts up. Because there's nothing worse than going into March and April and not being ready, not having your boxes built and painted, not having your frames, uh, your frames assembled, uh, Foundations waxed, frames cleaned, boxes recycled, dead outs cleaned out, wax melted, all that stuff. Nothing worse than not having that done because when the swarm season starts and when the splits start and when the honey harvesting and all that, getting ready for all that, I say honey harvesting, getting ready for um, putting boxes on for honey and, and such. If you're behind, you stay behind the whole year. You just never catch up. And <laughs> ask me how I know that. Um, so this year we're doing good. It's uh, it's still January, going into February soon, and got most everything done. It's got a few other things left that have to be done, and I'm gonna try and uh, get those on video for you and show you those things that we do as beekeepers and that I do for my operation. Um, again, this is my operation. This is how I do it, and this is what I do in South Louisiana. A lot of these things you'll see. Some beekeepers, they're not going to do them. Uh, you know, they've got too many hives. A, a commercial guy surely isn't going to do all this because uh, it's just um, it's way too much for those guys to do, those guys and gals. Um, you know, even a guy with 50, 60 hives, they're, they're not going to do some of the stuff I do. They don't have time. Uh, most of those guys, they're pretty much full-time doing this thing when you get up over, say, 500 or even 200. Um, but even 50, 60 hives, this is a lot to do. Like I say, I keep between, well, nowadays I keep between 15 and 25. That's an ideal number for me. Um, and uh, I can afford to do this. Actually, it saves me money doing this. So I'm going to go through, show a few things uh, that I'm doing to wrap up the winter season and get ready for the uh, bee season. So maybe a little monotonous, maybe. Maybe a little bit mundane. But these are the things that a lot of beekeeping videos don't show you. And again, this is not a how-to series. This is just showing you what I do. And, you know, and again, this isn't the glamorous stuff of beekeeping. This isn't the exciting going in the hive and spotting a queen and marking queens and doing splits and all that good stuff. This is just the, the mundane stuff that goes along with beekeeping. So, hope you enjoy it, as boring as it may be. But at the same time, I try to make it, I try to make it as uh, interesting as I can. And we'll see where we go from there. So, without further ado, let's get on to the videos. Well, today, we're doing some of those tedious tasks that you got to do in beekeeping in the off-season. Hopefully, you're not doing it in the peak season. This is the time to get it done. So, the goal today is to do a little work uh, preparing for swarm season. Okay, I'm going to begin to put my swarm traps out. I say swarm traps. I'm starting to try not to call them that. They're not really traps. And I'll explain that when we get into swarm season, I begin to set them. We'll call them bait boxes or swarm boxes, whatever. But swarm traps, that'll do too. So what I'm going to do is I got some uh, some stands I made. I made them last year. It makes it easy for me to change out a, a box really quick. If I catch a swarm, I can hurry up and put another box right on there because most of the time I can, I can catch two swarms in the same location. Usually the early swarm which is the larger one and sometimes a late swarm so I always go with the second box so I'm gonna go reinforce these things I found out they bowed a little bit too much because they're just built of uh, I think half inch plywood and I should have known better but no problem I've got some strips of one by I'm gonna stick on them so follow me along here we go okay here's what I have I have plywood, and what I did, I basically put two hinges and some lanyards, and it sits in a tree like so. I got a big old nail in the tree, 
hang that on a tree. Boom. A beehive box will sit right here. You can put a five frame or a ten frame. I do have one when I ran out of plywood. I made just a five frame for it. Um, so what's happening is these lanyards, of course, pull. Well, it, it's bowing this board. It's, it's bowing out because of the weight. I should have thought about that. So what I'm going to do is simply I got these old scraps. These used to hold together um, lids or frames in bulk. Maybe it was boxes in bulk. Anyway, the guy I buy stuff from, he would have these in bulk. And so he'd always throw a bunch in the box, you know, scrap lumber in case you want to make entrance reducers or do stuff like this. So I've learned to keep all kinds of scrap lumber and things, you know, if it's substantial size, to uh, build with. I had some clothesline. I had some uh, bolts. I had all that kind of stuff. And then I went and bought this plywood. And so I'm just going to take these. I beat the staples down and I'm going to basically just screw them on like that. Reinforce them. Two on each side. So that's what I'm going to get busy doing. Okay, there you go that was pretty simple I took a little bit but got all the strips on them that allow me to be ready for my swarm traps or bait boxes Isn't that what I said I'd call them yeah I'm trying to get into that anyhow um, got more work to do I have to uh, build some nuke boxes some five frame nuke boxes and I'm, usually nukes I use them I don't I don't uh, they're not permanent for me I use them to grow hives up or have a utility hive in the yard or two so that's what I use them for so uh, if I toy around with any queens I may use a couple for mating nukes um, you know if I have some cells that are extra when I do my splits so anyway huh, that wraps up those swarm trap platform maintenance project let's move on to the next one Old frames from Florida. Cleaning them out. Oh, that one that cracked. I don't know what that is. That's not. That's not right, Joe. downfall using this plastic cell I found is cleaning it. I used wax before. I like wax. They draw it really fast. But when you have to replace it, it becomes a pain. These you can just snap in and out. Alright, I'm going to get ready to wash these things. Okay, there you go. That's a wet and nasty job. How you like my pressure washer? That there pressure washer was found at a boat launch. It had been flooded. The guy was going to throw it away because it had been flooded. And 
Bruce the Alligator Man gave me that pressure washer. Man will give you a shirt off his back if you let him. You gotta stop him sometimes. But uh, it runs, it does good. I need to get it tuned up and get that. Rum, rum, rum. <laughs> That's got to go. But uh, you see what I did? I blew those off. Oh, shaky. I'm shaking because I'm holding on to that uh, handle. They came clean. I mean, I'm not worried about the brood much. The the brood frames. These are the brood frames. You can see they 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 came clean. Now they hold a lot of water because those little imprints. They're like cells. They're uh, shaped and that thing. I'm gonna go through and go ahead and shake all the water out as best I can. Shake all the little pieces of material off of them. Um, then I'm gonna stack them up in such a way that they get air between them and they'll dry. Oh. Now, those are honey frames. Those are going to get bleached and cleaned. Uh, and they'll be nice. They'll be clean. And you can see this is a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work to do this. So, you know, for some people, this isn't worthwhile to them. I understand that 100%. I do understand that. But uh, for me, it's worthwhile. I said another time when I was working on wood stuff, I'm cheap. So I do things on the cheap. And uh, I've got the time to go through and wax these. I did 200 at one time. Uh, and that was a lot, but this won't take long. I could once he's dry I can have all this wax in an hour Hey guys, just a little bit about uh, What I talk about as far as cleaning and waxing these frames and washing and scraping and all that good stuff See for me. I don't have a lot of hives. So it's worth the money. It's worth the money savings for me. It's worth the time It's not a big deal Commercial dies, big time sideliners, of course not. Not worth the time. But for me, I mean, it's just. Mr. Ed says you should show, throw them away. It's not worth the time and the effort. It's just as cheap as buy them. Just throw them away. Maybe that's what Mr. Ed does. That's not what I do. I think you should just go with plastic. I'm not big on plastic either. Plastic just isn't for me. Well, time is money. Time is money. Well, for me, time isn't money. Or money isn't time. It works out for me. It's just how I like to do it. So, I don't need either of your opinions. I'm going to continue doing what I do because you know what? It's my operation. You need to see what your operation is. If you've got time, you do it. If you don't, you don't. Figure out what's best for you. Because you know what? In beekeeping, it's all about each other's way of doing things. Twelve potato salads. Each one's different, but they're all potato salads. Which one do you like? I have all this wax in an hour. And I'm um, ready to go. Big thing is bleaching everything. i got to bleach the boxes. i got to bleach the frames. Get all the mildew off of them from sitting in the wood. Bleach those. So, tedious work, tedious tasks in the bee, in the beekeeping business. So, that's what we're doing. Tedious tasks. All right. I'm I tell you it's time to call it an evening we got a cool front getting ready to come through so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and uh, I got one two three four five boxes they're clean 
I got about 10 15 frames to finish up rinsing I'm gonna rinse out that tank clean it really good make sure it's sanitized and we're gonna call tonight um, I don't know if you can even see the video that well because it's already getting dark so anyway that was one day of uh, just a bunch of simple tasks that had to be done a lot of folks don't show this kind of stuff in their videos but this is the kind of stuff that I think people need to see sometimes and again it's not a how-to I've said it a million times it's not my it's just how I do my business down here and this is not even close to what a guy with 60 70 hives plus will, will do he, he probably won't even waste his time doing this kind of stuff but for me it's a say it's a money savings thing I have the time but it does take time it's taken me most of the day to go through clean up scrounge take apart you name it I've been doing it so and I'm not done I've got to build boxes but and honestly when I build those and get the rest of these frames scraped, all I have left is to hang swarm traps and rotate boxes if I choose so and wax some foundation. We're ready for the season after that. I can't tell you how much I want to always be ready. There's been some years I've been ready. There's been some years I've not. And I tell you, those years I'm not, I'm scrambling. All right, well, that's today's work. Got more to do this weekend. I'm going to wrap it up for this evening. Hey guys. I'm going to melt some wax down. This is the last of my cappings wax. The wax I take off of wax I take off of the frames when I'm uncapping honey. Now, that's just water. You'll see most, a lot of folks, this is how they, this is how they render their wax. I've got a wax pot that I use. I put about two to three inches of water in there. Oh, it's windy. Apologize for the wind. talking about tedious tasks tedious tasks this is one of them I always put this off until the end and I don't... when I harvest my frames of honey when everybody does you, you take the cappings off of the wax honeycombs and you extract the honey with a centrifuge basically an extractor and all those cappings they go into a pan and they drain and all the honey drains out and when they do, you save them. And then you render them and you make nice beeswax, lip balm, candles, lotion bars, whatever it is you make. So I just dumped that whole toad in there and it's gonna get interesting because honestly, that's the most I've ever tried to melt down at one time in that pot. So we're gonna see how that goes. But anyway, what I do is I, I show you the water and there I get that boiling. And then I put the wax in on that, and that's basically a cushion. What will happen is the wax is going to go ahead and melt down. It's all going to mix together and boil in there. I, actually, I won't boil it. I'll get it where it's just beginning to boil. And I'm going to pour that through a strainer into a bucket. The water is going to settle to the bottom. The wax is going to go to the top. Any residual honey and debris and some of the stuff that the bees have that, that, that's in the wax, it's a propolis or whatever it may be, it's all going to drain down the bottom. I'll let that sit overnight and tomorrow it'll be a nice thick brick of wax and I'll take a spatula, not a spatula, a uh, paint scraper and I'll scrape the bottom of that brick of wax and then that's going to be all the debris and the honey and all that stuff that's on the bottom is going to be on, it's going to be scraped off and I'll scrape that out in the yard, the bees will clean it up, rodent, uh, the uh, rodents, uh, possums, things like that. And then what I'll do is it won't be a pure blot and here's what it'll come out to be. This is what comes out. Propolis, debris on the bottom, 
I don't want to scrape all that off because what will end up happening is I'm actually scraping wax because there's wax mixed in there and this is a first rendering so what I'll do is I'll do that pot when that one's done I'll dump it in this bucket let it settle I'll get another cake like this I'll scrape it towards about like this then I will remelt them and do a second rendering that second rendering is basically going to get rid of the rest of that it's going to all settle to the bottom it'll be a nice smooth scrape and it'll be a nice clean bottom i'll have a nice pure uh block of beeswax and hopefully i get about five to five to ten pounds out of that and i've got about three pounds left in there i'm really short on wax i had an issue uh, last year where i had to do a lot of frame and wax re-wax a lot of foundation and so i, I went through a ton of wax I actually had to buy some anyway I'm going to get this wax rendered down. One thing I'm doing, I'm doing this in the cold. It's probably 40 degrees and breezy. The bees aren't flying. If this was summertime and I was doing this, that's another reason I wait till the winter. I would have bees everywhere. When they smell this wax and honey and all that, there would be a cloud of bees around me right now. So I don't want that. So that's another reason I wait for this. I don't do it immediately after I, uh, after I uncap the stuff. So it's going to get interesting. We're going to see how uh, how much this thing holds. I think it'll all fit in the bucket. We'll find out. All right, let me get back to doing this, and I will I will step back up when it's time to pour this off. Don't want to boil it. What they tell me. I don't know what it does. I don't know if it burns it. But since when you watch on YouTube, nobody boils it, I think I'm going to stick with that plan. But it can't be good for the wax. It's almost ready to pour off. Let's see if it fits. does boil and you boil it over beeswax is extremely flammable it'll hit that flame and it'll be like one of those fried turkey videos all right let me get ready to pour it off I got to stick my strainer in there I want it hot if it's ice cold when you pour it in there it'll immediately start solidifying on you I stick that in there, that cools it down, warms up my strainer. I do things a little differently. I guess you can see me, if not, you can see the pot. Now this is capping's wax. The capping's wax, it is a lot cleaner. It's premium wax. It's white wax. It's a little on the yellow side, this batch is, but the brood comb in the hives, when I strain that out, that's full of cocoons and everything, because that's where they raise their young. That's where the, the bees are raised in there, and it's a lot darker. It comes out almost an orange yellow color. When you strain that off, I couldn't near put that much wax in there because it would be, it would overwhelm the strainer because those cocoons and all are so thick. And there's a lot of propolis in those for sure. A lot of debris, some dirt maybe from different things. And that all gets strained out, of course. The brood wax, when I melt it down and make big blocks, I use that for re-waxing frames, which I'm probably gonna do a little later tonight. This I'll use for making candles, uh, uh, lip balm, lotion bars, um, blocks of beeswax to sell. All right, well, it's about melt down. Let's pour this off. That's some yellow wax. It's kind of tricky doing it in the cold, too. Just because everything gets solid so fast.
drainer has to catch up. Yeah, that's good looking wax. There's some debris already at the bottom. The debris all goes to the bottom, the wax goes to the top. Oh yeah, that did fine in that Oh, I dropped it. Real good. Yeah. A little foamy bucket of wax. Well, that's probably uh, half water, half wax. Wax, probably about that thick. Debris. We'll see. So here we are. Tedious tasks in beekeeping. In my beekeeping. As I said earlier, a lot of people won't do this. But a lot of people do. I saw, um, for those that watch Cayman Reynolds, he does uh, something similar. Uh, his difference is I've been using this hot plate since I started. I like this hot plate. It's a little easier for me than a crock pot. But the crock pot holds more. He uses a crock pot. But same thing, four inch sponge roller, kaboom. And you will most beekeepers you talk to, this is how they rewax plastic cell for the most part. Small time beekeepers, big time, they don't rewax it. So, you saw me clean all this up the other day. We got it all clean, it's dry. Now I'm gonna wax it. So, trade off 200 hives, they're worth your time to do all that. Uh, when I did 200 frames last year, it took a while. Um, it was worth it again for me. But a guy with a lot of hives that has had time, a lot of times they throw them away. Um, because it takes a while. So there's a money savings on it, but time is money too. So you figure it out. For me, this is worthwhile. So here's what I do. I got my hot plate. I got my hot plate. It's actually a little hot right now. I usually keep it about 300. That keeps it liquid for me. Put a piece of cardboard down on my table. I already did this one because I was trying to free up the roller, so it's heavily waxed. I usually don't wax them near that heavy. And here's my frames. Remember the sticks, the bulk carry uh, uh, packing sticks? Well, yeah, that's them. <laughs> I use them for everything. And what I do is I lay a frame on here, run wax, put it over here and dry. It done. Go this way with the other side. Do one side of the time, let them dry, flip it, do the other side of the time. 20 minutes, you're done with all these. Be surprised how much it wa wax it takes, even though you're putting a thin coat on. It takes a lot of wax. I use brood wax. This is brood wax. Capping's wax. The difference. Candles, hive maintenance. I have got a whole lot left and don't have a lot of that. I just melted that. Uh, two week, uh, no, a week ago. That's all I had left at one point. And then what we melted today earlier. All right, so I'm going to get busy on this. Here we go. I make sure to get the entire, the entire um, surface all the way to the edges. These are finicky. They will... They won't build on the edges a lot of times, so I, I try to put that wax out there to entice them. On the white frames, you can really see where the wax went. Yellow, not so easy. But you know what? Just a thin coat. My sponge isn't always full. Let me get a little bit right there. There we go. Ooh, that's a little too thick. Because you don't want to waste this stuff. Man, it is. It takes so much to do these frames. And just like that, that stack is done. I probably went a little thicker, but here's an idea. That honey was above that roller thick, or deep, I should say. And now it's not. Let me turn it down. And I did put it on thick. I did go thicker than I needed to, but the, the I'm pointing the wrong way. The goal in this, I did go thicker than I needed to. Um, but I've had good success doing this. I mean, they, they draw them out really good. But really, you're only wanting to get these little indent, not the indentation itself, but the raised edges of the of the octagon, the honeycomb. That's what you want to get the wax on that helps them pull it out. 
you can tell on this it's going down in there but on these it's actually just on the edge and that's good enough i pushed down too hard probably with my strain but I, I do go through a lot of wax doing it but in the end i do get a lot of good drawn out comb so hey i don't know probably need to go a little thinner especially since i've only got that one big block of wax left Anyway, I'm going to try and knock out a few more of these, and uh, these, got these right here I could plan to do. And that's it. All my foundation is waxed. From here on out, I have to buy what I don't have enough of. They look pretty, pretty rough, but they're not. Those bees will draw these things out, and it'll, it'll be as pretty as can be, and they'll have plenty of brood in there, and we'll be good to go. And each one of these with a frame is about 290 if you buy them in bulk. Maybe a little bit cheaper, probably down closer to $2 a piece. I've done in the last year and a half probably 300 total times $2 in bulk. And that's not the triple coated stuff. The triple coated stuff is even higher. And I'm basically doing triple coat and then some. So... It's probably more than that, so I'm, I'm saving quite a bit by doing this, and I have the time. Alrighty, well that's it for now. Hopefully tomorrow we can come back and take a look at that wax we melted down earlier, and see where we're at with that. Y'all have a good evening. Hey folks, uh, it's another day gone by. It's now the next day from when we melted that wax. So let's do a quick follow-up on that wax. I'll show you what uh, what we have when we're... Uh, when we're done rendering on the first uh, go around. Let's take a look. Okay, folks, here's our bucket of wax. You see the crack around it? I forget why they say that happens. Either it cools too fast or something or another. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. This is the first rendering, and what I'll do is um, I will be combining all the wax cakes I got into one and melting it down and making one big block out of it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and knock this out of here on the ground. It takes a good... Sometimes you got to hit it pretty hard uh, I'm gonna knock it out on the ground scrape it and then I'll take it in and wash it off put it with the other block and at that point it'll be ready for the final melt To make a mess so there's the debris propolis actually this one came out pretty nice take this this one came out very nice actually And all this liquid is, uh, that's honey and water. That water that mixed, that's the honey that settled down in it. It's actually real sticky uh, when it dries on you because it's honey mixed with water. I'm not going to get it super clean on the bottom because, again, I'm going to probably render this one one more time. It, this one really doesn't need it. Rinse all these leaves and junk off, and, it'll, and the honey, it'll probably be fine. But I can get it, the rest of that out. Yeah, this one, this one rendered out real good for the first time around. All right, what I'm gonna do is go in and wash it real good, make sure there's no dirt on it, and have it ready for the next go around. Yeah, this is honey that was still left in it. And it's not so much honey, you, you know, it looks like a lot, but it's not. Each little cap, each little piece has just a little residue of honey on it. And that's what's left. That 
that little residue is what you see. All that residue gathered together. That's what we have. Okay, this is what we have left. Actually, this is... I can probably clean that up. And what happens a lot of times is there's a lot of granular wax mixed in with that debris. But this time the debris was nice and clean. It was just debris. So it cleaned off really well. When it's that waxy stuff, like this other one, I like to do it one more time. That's wax still mixed in real hard, so. But hey, I'll, I'll do it all together. Maybe and get another one, it doesn't matter. Make a more perfect one. I like them when they look good. Not that it matters, because I'm gonna break them up with a hammer when I use them. Anyway, pure beeswax right there. Mmm. Can't smell that, can you? Ooh, smells good. All right, guys. I think that's about the last of our tedious tasks for this week. Y'all take care. Hey, folks. Well, that's it. Tedious tasks in the bee yard. My bee yard. Uh, just know it was a long video. I uh, hope you were able to stay through it all. hope it didn't bore you to death where you didn't continue on. But uh, I did just want to document what I do. Um, that's part of what I want to do this whole 2020 season is mainly for those that follow me on Facebook when I share this uh, on there and um, anybody else that's joined since, some subscribers that I have. I don't have a lot, but um, just wanted to show what I do and document what I do, and that's part of what I do right there. So I'm going to wrap this video up, call it a day. Um, you know, there's more tasks to do, but I won't bore everybody with everything. But it's going to pick up soon. We're going to be picking up really quick here. We're going to be... Uh, uh, reversing brood boxes here in another few days and that's uh, what I do in preparation for my splits in March and I'll explain more of that when I do that. Uh, bait boxes, swarm boxes are going to be getting hung up here in the next couple weeks, uh, maybe maybe three weeks actually and uh, I'll document that as we go out on the road and um, we being us, uh, we go out on the road and hang some of these boxes out and uh, and then of course after that we'll be getting into this you know, I'll be taking you along with splits and um, hive inspections and what we're doing and assessing hives and the things to do to get ready for uh, build up for the honey flow. So, that'll wrap up these videos. Hope you were able to hang to the end. I know it was boring, baby. And uh, if you weren't, maybe you can go back and watch it. But hey, if you like the video, hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's free. And hit the notify bell. That way you'll know every time we upload them. And until the next video, this is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a great evening, and God bless y'all. Hey, guys. Just want to talk a little bit about why I do the, the, the whatever. What is it? Oh, man. I, yeah, I need to. <laughs> man, mind. It's over. Let's, let's do another take. He ain't got it. Start over. Take two. You're right. <laughs>